is very bad. Um, I'd like to remind everyone to please turn off your cell phones. Uh, my name is David Greenberg, um, and I'm one of the co-chairs of MesosCon. Uh, we have simultaneous translation devices available outside in the hallway. Um, in channel one is in Chinese, and in channel two is in English. Um, and you can exchange your ID card for a translation device if you need one. Fan Yi Shi Bei Zai Tian Jing Qing Ping Zheng Tian Ling Chu. And don't forget to come to our reception tonight. Um, it'll be outside in the foyer, and so there we can socialize and network. And that'll be tonight after the conference, um, just outside there. There is a slide that comes next, which I was in control of. Um, I would like to thank our diamond sponsors, IBM and Mesosphere, who are our number one contributors to Mesos. So thank you, IBM, and thank you, Mesosphere. I'd also like to thank our platinum sponsor, Xu Ren Yun, um, and our gold sponsors, Huawei and NCS. Now I would like to invite um, Dr. Xie Dong, the Vice President of the China Systems Lab at IBM, and Ben Hindman, the Founder and Chief Architect of Mesosphere and the Creator of Mesos at Berkeley to the stage for our opening address. Thank you, Dave. Founder and the chief actor Ben. Uh, ben. 
Please. All right. Good morning, everyone. Give me just a sec. Well, I just, just have a, a couple of minutes with you all. All right, everyone can hear me? Yes, good. Okay, just a couple of minutes with you all, um, where I wanted to share a little bit about the, the updates about uh, uh, the Apache Mesos project in the community. Um, recently, we ran a survey and uh, I collected some of, the, some of the information, in fact, some of the slides from that survey. Uh, Mesos continues to grow quite a bit. Uh, in this last year, we had 52 Mesos meetups around the world. Um, we've had three Mesos cons. This is the third Mesos con this year. This is our first Mesos con in China, and that's very, very exciting. Um, we've had been, been growing the, the number of uh, contributors quite a bit. Um, which has been fantastic, and I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So, uh, when we first came out, a handful of us came out early, and we went and did a, a, a meetup out in Beijing, and that was a ton of fun. So, I just wanted to capture some photos here. Here's a photo of the meetup. It was really great to see uh, that there really is a Mesos community here in China uh, already that that um, is really growing on its own. Uh, I captured a couple of the slides from Dubon's talk, where I was talking about how they're using Mesos pretty extensively which is really cool to see. So as I mentioned, we've been, uh, we've been adding the, the number of contributors, and there's three new committers that I really wanted to announce. These three new committers are actually all from China, and I'm pretty sure they're all here in the room today as well. So if they could stand up, those three newest, Qian, Haozdent, and Guangya, if you guys could stand up. You know, I think one of the most fun parts about being involved in helping to grow an open source project is when you get to uh, meet with and work with uh, people from the community. And today was the first time I got to meet uh, at least Housden, and uh, it was really fun to uh, uh, get to meet him for the first time. So, uh, great to see, see the, the contributions from China, it's very cool. Um, Mesos is being used in a, a variety of places. Uh, this is just kind of, again, some of the, the stats that I've taken from the survey. Um, what I think is really impressive about this is that only half of the Mesos users out there are just tech companies. Or said another way, half of the Mesos users are not first and foremost tech companies or digital companies. They're companies in other areas of the industry uh, uh, that are actually able to leverage the technology for doing really interesting things. Um, you'll actually hear at this conference uh, from folks in the tech world, the software world, you're, you'll hear from Uber, you'll hear from Adobe, um, you'll, you'll hear from others as well. Uh, on the banking finance side, you'll actually hear from Commonwealth Bank, uh, um, and on the telecom side, a little later this morning, you're going to hear from China Unicom. So it's really exciting to see that, not just around the world, but also here at um, MesosCon China, we're really getting that, uh, uh, that variability of, of um, the, the industry. One of the other really interesting things about how Mesos is being used today is it's really being used not just on the cloud or not just on-prem, but across all these, these different places. A uh, majority of organizations are using Mesos on-prem, but there's quite a few that are actually using a hybrid. Um, you know, we've kind of all known this as, as part of the Mesos project, but one of the things that we're really excited about is hybrid cloud and multi-cloud. We really think that that's the future of where the Mesos project is going and what we're focusing on. Uh, and there's a talk later today from the Adobe guys about how they're taking uh, uh, Mesos to multi-cloud. And there's a lot of work that's actually happening in the community right now around this. There's a federation working group that's meeting every, every two weeks on Tuesday morning. You can find out more about that at this Mesos Jira, uh, as well as to, if you check out Slack, there's a channel where, where there's a lot of work that's happening there. And I'm really excited about what, what the future, what, what's in store in the future for, for multi-cloud and hybrid cloud for Mesos. One of the other really interesting things uh, that came out of the survey uh, is the kinds of applications that people are running on top of Mesos. Um, you know, majority containers, microservices, but still quite a few data services and analytics. Um, one of the things that I thought was especially interesting to take away from the survey, though, was that most of our users are running containers in production. 
which is to say that they're using Mesos to run their containers today in production. 62% uh, is actually a really big number compared to the industry averages of, of what people are actually running in production when it comes to containers. And I think one of the reasons for that is because Mesos has a really storied history when it comes to containerization. Uh, it's really been a pioneer in containerization, doing containers uh, before Docker was really a thing uh, uh, for a long time. Um, we used to have this thing that we called the Mesos Containerizer that now we call the Unified Containerizer. And the Mesos Containerizer had really innovated uh, uh, at, at the, the very beginning. One of the things that it did that um, we were always really proud of is that with the Mesos Containerizer, you could reboot a Mesos agent and any of the containers you previously had run will just keep running. That's now becoming a standard and anybody who's launching containers have to have a feature like that. You can hear more about the Mesos Containerizer now what we call the Unified Containerizer as a talk um, tomorrow. Um, you also though can hear about some of the new uh, uh, work that, that we're doing in containerization during the keynote tomorrow morning. There's a presentation about this new primitive we introduced called nested containerization, which is again us taking the concepts of containerization and pushing it even farther. This stuff's really cool, the nested containerization stuff. I won't go into too much detail now, you'll hear more tomorrow. Related to that, we're also doing a bunch of future work around being able to attach to containers, debug containers, using this nested, nested containerization primitive. So please uh, check that stuff out. Okay, another area um, that, that I found really interesting in the survey <clears throat> was about the kinds of different workloads that people were actually running on top of Mesos. Um, you know, I just kind of wanted to zoom in on big data because big data ends up being one of the things that's run in a really big way on top of Mesos. Spark, Kafka, Elasticsearch, Cassandra, Hadoop, so forth and so on. And one of the things that's really exciting for us about that is it's really this, this advent of the future which is multi-tenancy is key. In fact, one of the, the, the stats that we got was the average user is running three or more frameworks on top of Mesos, so three or more big data or, 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 or d different kinds of workloads at the same time. So multi-tenancy really is the future of where everyone's going in the container orchestration and the resource management space. Uh, there's one talk, one of the last talks of the day tomorrow uh, uh, by our friends at Uber is going to be talking about how they're extending Mesos to run multiple frameworks. And there's a lot that's happening here in the community right now that's all about the new primitives, new abstractions we're going to be building into Mesos to support multi-tenancy. So that's really exciting, lots of fun things here. A bunch of this is actually work that we've been doing with our colleagues and our new committers uh, from China. So it's especially exciting to be here and, and working with them in person on that. Okay, um, one last uh, 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 information that we got from the survey that I really liked was you know, why people were picking Mesos. And a couple of the big ones that popped up was scale, they knew that they could run it at scale in their organizations. Product maturity, it's been running for a very long time in a bunch of organizations. Um, you know, it had features like high availability, fault tolerance, and all these things were mature, and, and, and people, people felt that, that, that they could trust this technology for in their environments. But one of the things that I really took out of this that I thought was so interesting was while, uh, while this is all true and, and you know, the product is mature and we can run at scale, we continue to innovate quite a bit. You know, we continue to change all the time. There's a lot of things that we're introducing all the time, and I think that's one of the critical things of open source projects is when they get mature, they continue to, to change, and they continue to change in a way where organizations can benefit from, from, from the changes. So, you know, there is a talk later today that I think is interesting, talking about getting rid of Zookeeper. It's one of those things that's really stable in Mesos. We want to be able to allow people to use other technologies like Etsy. There's, other, there's, there's lots of other interesting work. I could have called out a bunch of them. I only called out one, which is restartable tasks. It's work that's being driven by Apple, um, where they're trying to introduce this to make running some of the stateful services that they have on top of Mesos work even better. Again, you can check out a lot more of the roadmap. So that was all I had, just a couple of quick notes. Uh, I'm so excited to be here at MesosCon China. This is, I know it's especially exciting for, for the MesosCon community here. Uh, and I'm hoping that everybody has a, a lot of fun the next two days. Thank you.